Hey y'all, what's up my little coders? Let me show you in this tutorial how to solve the little question number 70. Climbing stairs. Basically, you're climbing a staircase and it takes n steps to reach the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? Here's some examples, however, I will skip them because I prepared my own examples. Right, if n is equal to 1. How many distinct ways there are to reach the top if you can only do like one or two steps? There are basically only one distinct way, so you just do like one step and you reach the top. If n is equal to two, there are two distinct ways. You can do like one step plus one step, or second option is just to do two steps at the same time and you reach the top. We return two here. If n is equal to three, there are three distinct ways, one plus one plus one, or two plus one, or one plus two. Here we will return three n is equal to 4, there are 5 distinct ways, so we can do 1 step plus 1 step plus 1 step plus 1 step, or do like 2 steps plus 1 step plus 1 step, or like 1 plus 2 plus 1, or 1 plus 1 plus 2, and 2 plus 2. In total, there are 5 distinct ways to climb to the top, if n is equal to 4, right? n is equal to 5, okay, there are a bit more distinct ways, there are 8 in total, okay, I will not go through, through them, there are too many of them, but yeah, just believe me, there are 8 distinct ways to, you know, to climb the top if n is equal to 5. Now, what it all means, guys. Now, let's think about how can we solve this problem. Look at this, you know, answers for each n value from 1 to 5. Just pause this video, look at these return values and think a bit. Do you see any patterns here? Just pause the video. Okay, cool. If you pause the video, I hope you figure out it yourself. In case if you didn't, basically, Okay, we calculate n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. Then if you look at n is equal to 3, so we need to return 3, right? But 3 is also the same as, you know, the sum of two previous values. n is equal to 2 is like 2, we do like 2, plus n is equal to 1 is 1. So if we do like 2 plus 1, we get 3 as well. If you look at n is equal to 4, we need to return 5. But, you know, if you look at the two previous return values, and if you do like, if you sum up them together, 3 plus 2, we also get 5. Same for n is equal to 5, so 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, and here we need to return 8. And basically, yeah, this is the algorithm. If you calculate the first, you know, two values for n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2, and then like to calculate the next value, you just sum up the two previous values. Okay, cool, you found the answer, then you move to the next value, you sum up the two previous values, and you know, until you reach your n value. You solve the problem by splitting it up into, sub, into some sub-problems, and by solving the sub-problems, you will solve your final problem in the end as well. And there are basically a lot of ways how can you code it to, you know, solve the sub-problems sub first and then solve the final problem. I will show you two ways how we can solve this problem. The first approach is to use the dynamic programming. Let me just quickly write the code for it. It will be a short one, and then I will go through, through it with you in a few seconds. Here we go, guys. Here's the base case. If n is equal to 1, you just return 1 because there's only one distinct way. Then you create your DP array because it's the dynamic programming approach. You create your DP array of size n plus 1. You'll use this DP array to basically, you know, calculate all the sub-problems. Then after that, we calculate our first sub-problems for n is equal to 1 and n, n is equal to 2. And here are the return values for these sub-problems. After that, we'll iterate from 3 up to n, including the n value itself. And then we just simply say that, you know, the current value is equal to the sum of the previous value and the previous previous value. We sum up them together and, you know, we'll iterate through from, one, from 3 to n, including the n. And in the end, we just return our last value from the DP array, which will represent the amount of distinct ways to reach the top for value n. Simply as that, guys. Okay, let me submit the code. Cool, 100%, 0 milliseconds. And yeah, this is one possible approach how we can solve this problem. Also, the second possible approach. If you look at this sequence, right? 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. If you remember from your mathematics classes from the school, I don't know, it might look very familiar to you because it looks very similar to the Fibonacci numbers. Just with one difference. In Fibonacci sequence, you have like two ones in the beginning, but no, in this climbing stairs sequence, you have only one one value. 
but yeah apart from that it's basically the same so 1 2 3 5 8 13 21 and so on so 1 2 3 5 8 13 and 21 and so on as well we're just missing one value in the beginning but it doesn't really matter the second approach would be to just implement the you know to calculate the fibonacci number basically the fibonacci of n okay let me show you how to do it let me just write the code quickly for you guys and i will go through it with you in a few seconds Similar technique here, just the only difference we're not using the integer array, we just are using some variables to do basically the same stuff. There are two base cases, n is equal to 1, we return 1, n is equal to 2, we return 2, right? After that, we declare three variables, the current integer to calculate the current sub amount, so the sub n value. After that, we have like the previous number and the previous previous number. Similar for loop, so we are starting at i is equal to 3 and you know we will iterate up to the n value including the n itself and then we update the current uh, the current value it's basically equal to the two previous numbers and yeah we need to update the previous numbers as well because you know on the next iterate on the on each iteration of the for loop you know the previous values change a bit previous 2 is equal to previous 1 the previous 1 is equal to the current then we'll go to the next iteration of the for loop and the current will be a new current and so on yeah but the algorithm is the same you just like sum up the two previous values and then in the end you just return like the current which will represent you know once you iterate until the end which will represent like the n value and the amount of distinct ways to climb to the top giving given this n value simply as that guys let me just submit it oh 100 as you can see here the memory usage is a bit lower we don't use the any extra space in this case, so we don't declare the integer array. So we got a better result for the memory usage, which is quite good. But yeah, guys, simply as that. I don't think that I have anything else to say. I hope it was clear. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please, guys, please give it a like and subscribe. I will really appreciate that. And challenge your friends to see if they can solve this problem or not. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Good luck.